Hi everybody, I am Joyce Fernandes and I am teaching Euracom 101 this fall semester. Welcome to everybody. I hope it has settled in to you that your life is going to change again because we're going from our summer lives into fall, into school. This particular semester, in my opinion, goes by quicker than any other. You know, you start off the first week of September. Before you know it, it will be October and then Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then we're saying season's greetings and it's over. It goes by fast. I think of it as like a big jump rope and once it starts, it doesn't stop and you have to get into it. I use the folder method. Many of your um, teachers might do the same thing where every week there's a weekly folder that opens up and within that folder there are assignments. There's readings and there's activities from discussion boards to reading chapters to looking at focal points which are your vocabulary words or just readings in general. Different articles or ideas I will put onto the, uh, the, the folder at, just like I would if I was teaching face to face and you might bring in something into class as an extra extra and all that's part of your whole as far as your academics and your enrichment to get the most out of this class. Students who participate, who get involved in the discussion boards, who read the chapters, who take the assignment seriously, really do feel at the end of 14 weeks that they've learned something or they've been changed. You can do everything that I ask you, but do it in a level of non-involvement, not really heavily contributing, and say, well, I passed, and that's fine if that's what you want to do. But if you take it seriously and take it one step at a time, I think it really will, you will find that you have become educated in maybe a way you weren't expecting. Chapter one of our book that I have assigned for week one is all about the communication model. I think as you start to read it, you will understand how connected written communication and oral communication are. They're all part of the same cloth, right? You have the relationship between the writer and the reader, like you have the relationship between the speaker and the listener. And then chapter two will show you the connection between the communication discipline and the behavioral and social sciences. So the origins, it's very interesting to me. These chapters are short. They're only 10 to 12 pages. They do give you some extra reading if you'd like to. So take it in what you can, leave the rest, but try to really give it a chance. Just don't review it, try to really read it. Now the focal points, those are the vocabulary words, and you will see them again on the final exam that is going to be opened up for you on December 7th to December 17th. It's a multiple choice, multiple answer, and those are what you're going to be tested on, those focal points, those are vocabulary. You'll see at the end of every chapter there's a glossary, so make note of that. If I were you, I would look at the focal points, read the chapter, then go back and look at those words again in the glossary, and maybe reread the chapter. Just let it sink in, let it sink in. You do not have to memorize, just be familiar and be able to identify them at the end of the semester. As I said, you're gonna have 10 days <laughs> to do a final exam that is not timed. It's the type of test that you can open up, save and go back to. So you could do five like vocabulary words a, a, a day if you want until you finally finish. But it is accessible for everybody to do. So it's not about memory, it's about um, being familiar and being able to identify and really take note of what the, how the glossary gives the definition because my definition and your definition of a term might be a little different. So you have to see what the book says to be successful. But that's the final exam. When students say, what do we do with all these chapters? Well, they're there for personal enrichment to really give you a setting, a context for doing your speeches and for you to have aha moments. So they're there for you, but in the end you will be quizzed on during the final exam on those terms. The discussion boards, I love the discussion boards. Now I, uh, there's usually two to one, sometimes three discussion boards a week. It depends on the week and what's happening and how I want us to proceed as far as being connected to the student learning outcomes, right? So the discussion boards have a purpose. They're not just 
just random, they're connected to what we're doing. And they come from a wide variety of backgrounds. The first one is that young man who is so concerned about, you know, doing everything like technically correct. Now we will find out that it's not so much about being technically correct with your presentations. It's about being earnest, sincere, and giving good effort. And then the second woman who is so delightful to me, I love her phrase, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. And how many times have we had that experience? After each video, I give you discussion questions that are really suggestions. If you don't like any of the questions I pose, don't answer them. Just give me your own natural response. As if we were in the classroom and we watched a video and I went around to everyone and said, so what do you think, what do you think? You can write down that, that's valid. I put those prompts in because sometimes students feel lost. Like, what do I do with this information? So I'm trying to guide you. I'm just trying to guide you. But I certainly don't have the only prompts that are value. You will have your own. So as long as you contribute. Usually I say two to three sentences and then always go back, even if it doesn't say it, that you have to contribute at least two or three sentences per discussion board and then go back and respond to at least one of your classmates' um, responses. You just respond back like you're having a conversation. Now you could do it to more than one, you could do it to all of them, but at least to one. So that's starting to build the relationship in our group. And it's important to do that on a weekly basis so that it doesn't get overwhelming. It was, it is a 13 to 14 week class that has been stretched out with assignments. So sometimes it might seem a little slow paced, but truly, if you keep up with it, a little by little, maybe two hours, three hours, four hours per week. Uh, they say you should do six to nine hours per class. Sometimes you'll need it, sometimes you won't. You will start to get the course, feel connected, and you will be content knowing you are doing the best you can and you will be learning. Let me think what else I have on my paper for right now. I teach four different types of Calm 101s. I have an honor section, a learning community, and then I have asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous means you are totally on your own. You know, it's a traditional online class where you never have to meet as a group or have any particular required time. You are totally independent, which some of you might be very familiar with that. And synchronous means there's a time. And you'll notice that when you look on the course offerings for all the courses, you gotta read the fine print. What are the requirements? Like what day? Some teachers put six days. I have seven days that are required and the times that are required. So this is how you have to adjust your schedule. If you are available and you can make it work, it can be a lot of fun. But if not, you take a asynchronous course, you see? And for some classes, like the learning community is asynchronous and the honors component is synchronous. So they didn't have a choice, right? So, but there's value to each form. Not one is better than the other, they're just different. To the students, the Asynchronous ones, I will make sure I have some Zoom office hours offered throughout the semester so we can meet. We can have conversations just like this that we're having right now. Well, this is one-sided, isn't it? 